Hello World at the end of February 2022 as a result of an air attack by Russian troops on the Gostomel Airport near Kiev. One of the largest and most powerful aircraft in the world, the AN-225 Mira, was destroyed. What kind of ship was it? How did it perish? What is needed to restore it and how much does it cost? Let's take a look at today's video with you. Ready to know the details? Then let's go! Let me note right away that the loss of the largest aircraft in the world, the AN-225 Mariah, is a real tragedy for the entire global aviation community. This air vehicle could safely fly in the sky for many years to come. However, the shameless, arrogant and cynical invasion of the Russian army into the territory of sovereign Ukraine turned our Mariah into a pile of metal. Ukrabaranprom, which owned the aircraft through Anatov Airlines, made a statement the construction of a new Mariah could cost at least $3 billion and take more than five years. And here is the most important question. Is there any point in trying to restore the winged bird from the past? Or is the damage to the Mariah so serious that it would be better to start a new milestone in the history of Ukrainian aviation? Let's look into all these issues together and finally put a comma in the sentence. You can't forget to restore. Let's immediately understand what is the AN-225. In fact, this is an important project of the Anatov Design Bureau, which is located in Kiev. The Mariya airliner was created in a single copy for the Soviet space shuttles in Buran. I will not hide the fact that almost the entire USSR was engaged in the assembly at one time. Aircraft parts were made in many cities. Kiev, Zaporozhye, Tashkent, Yulanovska, Moscow, Nizhny Novgorod and Voronezh. Here, however, few people thought about the issues of efficiency and economy of the Mariah, like other Soviet aircraft. The most important goal was to create a super large airliner, and the goal was achieved. Buran never became a full fledged space program, and after the collapse of the USSR, the project was closed. But what happened to Mariah? For sure, you would like to ask. The plane was not operated by anyone for many years and it was returned to flights only in the 2000s. It should also be noted that the air vehicle turned out to be extremely expensive to operate, and therefore it was ordered, as a rule, only for the purpose of transporting single oversized cargo. Let me start with the fact that Mariah is the heaviest cargo lifting aircraft that has ever taken to the airspace. Although it is not surprising, given the dimensions of this vessel. As for the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft, it is about 640 tons. By the way, I forgot to say that the airline was built in 1988 at the Kiev Mechanical Plant. Friends, the scale of an AN-225 is really amazing. Its length is 84 meters and its height reaches 18 meters. For a good example, it's like a six-story four-entrance building. By the way, another important fact, Mariah set a world record for takeoff weight and payload. On March 22, 1989, the AN-225 flew with a load of 156.3 tons, thus breaking 110 world aviation records at the same time, which is a record in itself. Impressive, isn't it? And yet, since the start of the operation of the Mariah aircraft, he managed to fly more than 3,740 hours. And this is also a great reason to be proud. Well. I cannot fail to note one technical characteristic worthy of attention. It can be assumed that each engine in takeoff mode develops a power of the order of 12,500 horsepower. Therefore, you can only imagine how powerful this huge machine moving in the airspace is. Recently, the updated and improved Mariah was at the Gostomel Airport near Kiev. But with the beginning of the Russian aggression against Ukraine, something irreparable happened. As a result of an air attack by the Russian army, a huge powerful Ukrainian-made AN-225 aircraft was mercilessly burned. The troops of Putin, who started this bloody war against the Ukraine state, ended up in Mariya as a symbol of the capabilities of Ukrainian aviation. The aircraft was rightfully considered an aviation giant, which had many records for the transportation of the maximum commercial cargo 
and the longest and heaviest monocargo in the history of aviation. Unfortunately, after the invaders attacked the airport where the plane was located, these options were lost. Circumstances developed in such a way that the aircraft simply did not have time to take off from the territory of Ukraine. At the moment, it is rather difficult to say with certainty how deep the damage of the Mora involved as a result of the attack is. But in appearance, they are incredibly strong and now the plane is in critical condition. Judging by the photographs that walk on the network, it will be very difficult to restore the aircraft. I would even say almost impossible. However, this does not mean at all that the Ukrainian giant will no longer take to the skies. So, in Ukrobaronprom, they said that the airliner would definitely be restored. Approximate estimates make it clear that about 3 billion US dollars must be spent on restoring the aircraft. If we talk about the time frame, then it is at least 5 years. Ukrobaronprom says, Our task is to make sure that these costs are covered by the Russian Federation which caused deliberate damage to Ukrainian aviation and the air cargo sector. We can only hope that this will be the case, because it is very painful to look at what happened to such a beautiful aircraft, the pride of Ukraine. Considering this question, you can philosophize a little. Remember, for example, what the Ukrainian army was like in 2014 and what it has become now after the gradual transition to Western standards. And now let's compare with the largest army in Europe from Russia and its successes during the war in Ukraine. As you probably already understood, the biggest does not mean the best. The era of such records on paper is already over. It's time for efficiency. In the modern world, Mariah flew only for the reason that there was no need to depreciate it. In fact, Antonov Airlines had a ready-made aircraft that simply needed to be technically serviced. The cost of building a new Mariah was not included in the transportation. Then a completely logical question arises. Is it worth spending more than 3 billion US dollars and about 5 years to build another record in a single copy? Or is it better to spend such a lot of money more efficiently? Everyone chooses the answers to these questions for himself and what the government decides. We will find out over time. What else is interesting? Antonov has a second Mariah which is actually 60% ready. Since Soviet times, the center section, fuselage, parts of the tail unit and the wing have remained. There were plans to complete the construction of the airliner in the Antonov plant if funding was available. According to some reports, back in 2016, the Chinese company, Airspace Industry Corporation of China, wants to buy out the second Mariah and after some time, set up mass production in China. That's just all the agreements were limited to signed memorandums of intent. So, we can assume that Ukraine will now complete the construction of the almost completely finished glider, so that another Mariah will appear in the country. As for financing, as I said, restoring the new Mariah will cost about $3 billion, but the completion of the second Mariah will cost approximately $250 to $300 million. Agree if the difference is significant. Friends, what else can I add here? I would like to note that the Iron Mariah can easily be turned into a pile of metal, but only the Mariah of free Ukrainians to live and build their own future in a democratic and civilized world cannot be destroyed or destroyed. Glory to Ukraine! Glory to heroes!